Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ 900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 14 of 63, Azure Marketplace. My name's Tim Warner, I'm your instructor. Today's objective in the AZ 900 objective domain starts with understand core Azure services, passes into the objective, describe some of the core products available in Azure. It's gonna take us a while to get through this section of the outline because the core of Azure is its product portfolio. And specifically, our skill today is to describe the Azure Marketplace and its usage scenarios. If you'd like to download the exam blueprint in Excel format, go to timw.info forward slash az900. Let's get to work. The Azure Marketplace is an online store for first and third party applications in Azure. Now, what's the difference between a first and third party? First party is Microsoft. So for example, if you want to deploy a virtual machine, you can very easily through the Azure Marketplace build Windows-based virtual machines using Microsoft's own images as well as several Linux-based virtual machines. That's the third party. That is to say, the Azure Marketplace is open to authorized third-party service providers. And you'll learn more about that as we go on. But what I want you to know right now is that you can find all three service delivery type applications, SaaS, PaaS, and IaaS. Hopefully you've been watching this study guide series sequentially. We covered SaaS, PaaS, and IaaS earlier yet. And the idea with the Azure Marketplace is that it can save you time and money because instead of having to create your applications and your services entirely on premises, you can get a running start by deploying a service in Azure through the Azure Marketplace and then either perform a data migration or just do a cloud only deployment. One common pattern for use with the Azure Marketplace is called the Network Virtual Appliance or NVA. Now this is a diagram that I've borrowed from the Azure Architecture Center and you see a timw.info link there if you're interested in checking out the details. But let's imagine that your business is currently licensed for say F5 load balancers. F5 is a big name in the load balancer world. And let's say that you've already got a relationship with F5 networks and now that your company is gradually beginning to do Azure deployments, you want to reuse your existing licenses. You want your network administrators to be able to just modify their existing network and load balancing configurations in the cloud without having to reinvent the proverbial wheel. One thing you could do is deploy an F5 Networks hosted network virtual appliance from the Azure Marketplace. Isn't that cool? As you'll see in our demo, there's lots of big name technology vendors who make their applications and services available. In the Azure Marketplace, almost always it's done as a specialized virtual machine. And you deploy that specialized virtual machine normally into its own virtual network subnet. In this diagram, you see an NVA that's serving as, say, a load balancer or a firewall. It's placed in a demilitarized zone or DMZ subnet where it looks like it has a public IP that takes it out into the public internet as well as got a routing path to a virtual network gateway and then to an on-premises network. Now, the thing with network virtual appliances is, like I said, they allow you in many cases to reuse your existing licenses and you can avoid having to learn a new product. You can continue to use the products that you know and love. Sometimes there's going to be a small feature difference between how the physical appliance behaves in your on-premises environment versus running in a virtual machine in Azure, but it's certainly a whole lot better than nothing. Last thing I'll say is that when you deploy a network virtual appliance, it almost always requires you to have a fair amount of networking skills. You'll have to take control over the routing paths in your virtual network. You see those rectangles that are labeled UDR? That stands for User Defined Routing. And we don't need to get any further because AZ-900 is a non-technical certification. But if you decide to go into the associate and expert level in the Azure Administrator and Architecture certifications, you'll need to know quite a bit about UDRs, or User Defined Routes. Okay, in this demonstration, we're going to look at the Azure Marketplace. I'm logged into the Azure portal, portal.azure.com, as a subscription owner. So let's open the favorites list here and go to create a resource. This is one entry point into the Azure Marketplace, as you can see. 
we can always search the marketplace directly or we can choose popular images over on right and then on the left we have all the different categories now of course you'll see the most popular from microsoft's perspective the most popular choice is windows server 2016 that's a virtual machine image ubuntu server again that is a virtual machine web app is an azure app service app sql database is an azure sql database etc so what i want you to see here is azure marketplace is a collection of first First and third party images, not all necessarily virtual machines, but even platform as a service and software as a service options as well. Let me click see all. And that takes us to this separate page where again, you can just go through the list here by category. You can browse the choices that are on the front page here. And again, it's important to note that it's first and third party. I always chuckle when I see a screen like what you're looking at right now, where you see in a Microsoft product, you see canonical Ubuntu and Red Hat Enterprise. It's amazing how Microsoft has evolved over the last several years. Now I had mentioned F5 load balancers earlier in this lesson. If we do a search for F5, notice we get a whole bunch of their products show up as network virtual appliances. So what I want you to see here is that it's up to the vendor how they do their pricing. In other words, you'll find that not all, but some Azure Marketplace products have a free trial. Some have BYOL licensing, that stands for bring your own license. And some have PayG, where you can actually pay as you go with that product, okay? Now understand you're paying the vendor, not Azure. There are some exceptions to that rule where you can install and deploy a marketplace image from the Azure marketplace and have those costs as part of your Azure payment method. But normally it's separate and you work on licensing with the vendor itself. Another thing you're going to see with these vendor, these third-party Azure marketplace products, is that the degree of documentation differs. In other words, some of the more popular, more robust vendors like F5 Networks, you see they've really gone to town here, giving you preset configurations, giving you a lot of documentation as far as what you get. And a lot of times the docs will take you out to their page. And it looks like in this case, Microsoft has a preferred solution badge. And this is something that Microsoft awards to partners that really go above and beyond and helping to make their product as easy to use in Azure as possible. If we head on over to plans here for this F5 Big IP Virtual Edition Load Balancer, you can see some links here. Watch our VE deployment demo, go to modules, and these are going to click us out to the vendor's page where they'll give you information. Oftentimes, they'll point to tutorials specifically dealing with Azure. Okay, so I would, as a general rule, recommend that if you're going to go with a third party, go with an established partner that has well-documented solutions in the Azure market marketplace to make that transition as seamless as possible. Another place we can see this is in the virtual machines blade. When we're deploying a virtual machine and we know we want it from the gallery, I've shown you this in a previous lesson, but it's fine for us to go over it again. Let's scroll down a little bit. And under image, we've got browse all public and private images. Well, guess where Microsoft takes you? It takes you to the marketplace. Now, if you have your own virtual machine images, that's what the My Items tab is. Otherwise, we're dealing with the Azure Marketplace. And finally, you can go to the subscription blade to check out your current relationship with third-party Azure Marketplace providers. I've had to log into another tenant that I have access to, and I'm looking at the subscription information. Remember, you can just type subscription to go to the subscriptions blade and then select your subscription. If we come down in the settings, down to under settings, it's a little bit odd that it's called programmatic deployment. This is where you can go to view the details for any Azure Marketplace partner licenses that you've enabled. For learning resources, check out the Azure Marketplace public gallery at timw.info forward slash AMG. This is a version of the Azure Marketplace that you can browse without having to have an Azure subscription. It's open to the world and it's very useful and informative in my humble opinion. Equally important is the Azure Marketplace documentation. Now note that this documentation is for application providers and not for customers. What if, for instance, you make an enterprise software product 
and you want to make the application available to your customers in Azure, you would want to apply to become an authorized marketplace vendor. And you'll work with Microsoft in a way that's somewhat redolent of, say, submitting a mobile app to Apple for publication in their iOS store or to Google for inclusion in their Google Play Store. The short URL for the Azure Marketplace docs is timw.info forward slash AMD. Alrighty, another lesson down. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Thank you so much for your participation. Please follow me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. My plural site content is at timw.info forward slash ps, and you can go to my website at your convenience, techtrainertim.com. Take good care and happy studying.